The Siege of Plevna, or Siege of Pleven, was a major battle of the Russo-Turkish War, fought by the joint army of Russia and Romania against the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman defense held up the main Russian advance southwards into Bulgaria for five months, encouraging other great powers actively to support the Ottoman cause. Eventually, superior Russian and Romanian numbers forced the garrison to capitulate. The Russian-Romanian victory on 10 December 1877 was decisive for the outcome of the war and the liberation of Bulgaria. Background In July 1877 the Russian army, under the command of Grand Duke Nicholas, moved toward the Danube River virtually unopposed. As the Ottomans had no sizable force in the area, the Ottoman High Command sent an army under the command of Osman Nuri Pasha to reinforce Nikopol, but the city fell to the Russian vanguard in the Battle of Nikopol before Osman reached it. He settled on Plevna, a town among vineyards in a deep rocky valley some 20 miles to the south of Nikopol, as a defensive position. The Ottomans quickly created a strong fortress, raising earthworks with redoubts, digging trenches, and quarrying out gun emplacements. From Plevna Osman's army controlled the main strategic routes to the Balkan Mountains. As the Turks hurried to complete their defenses, Russian forces began to arrive. The Siege First Battle Gen. Schilder Schuldner, commanding the Russian 5th Division, 9th Corps, received orders to occupy Plevna. Schilder Schuldner arrived outside the town on 19 July and began bombarding the Ottoman defences. The next day his troops attacked and succeeded in driving Ottoman forces from some of the outer defences, however, Osman Pasha brought up reinforcements and launched a series of counter-attacks, which drove the Russians from the captured trenches, inflicting 4,000 casualties at a cost of 1,000 of his own men. Second Battle Osman Pasha strengthened his defences and built more redoubts, his force growing to 20,000 men, while the Russians obtained reinforcements from the army of Prince Carol of Romania, who made the stipulation that he be given command of the joint besieging force. Gen. Nikolai Kreidner also arrived with the Russian 9th Corps. General Shakovsky's cavalry attacked the eastern redoubts while an infantry division under General Mikhail Skobolev assailed the Grivitse redoubt to the north. Shakovsky managed to take two redoubts, but by the end of the day the Ottoman forces succeeded in repulsing all the attacks and retaking lost ground. Russian losses amounted to 7,300 and the Ottomans to 2,000. Third battle after repulsing the Russian attacks, Osman failed to press his advantage and possibly drive off the besiegers. He did, however, make a cavalry sortie on 31 August that cost the Russian 1,300 casualties and the Ottomans 1,000. The Russians continued to send reinforcements to Plevna, and their army swelled to 100,000 men, now personally led by the Grand Duke. On 3 September Skobolev reduced the Turkish garrison at Lovech, guarding the Ottoman supply lines, before Osman could move out to relieve it. The Ottoman army organized the survivors of Lovech into three battalions for the Plevna defenses. Osman also received a reinforcement of 13 battalions, bringing his total strength to 30,000, the highest it would reach during the siege. In August, Romanian troops led by General Alexandru Cernod crossed the Danube and entered the battle with 43,414 men. On the 11th of September the Russians and Romanians made a large-scale assault on Plevna. The Ottoman forces were dug in and equipped with German Krupp-manufactured steel breech-loading artillery and American-manufactured Winchester, repeaters and Peabody Martini rifles. For three hours they poured murderous fire into the waves of advancing Russians. Tsar Alexander II and his brother Grand Duke Nicholas watched from a pavilion built on a hillside out of the line of fire. Skobolev took two southern redoubts. The Romanian 4th Division led by General George Manu took the Grivitse redoubt after four bloody assaults, personally assisted by Prince Carol. The next day, the Turks retook the southern redoubts, but could not dislodge the Romanians, who repelled three counter-attacks. 
From the beginning of September, Russian losses had amounted to roughly 20,000, while the Ottomans lost only 5,000. Fourth battle growing Russian and Romanian casualties put a halt to frontal assaults. Gen. Eduard Ivanovich Todleben arrived to oversee the conduct of the siege as the army chief of staff. Todleben had proven command experience in siege warfare, having gained renown for his defense of Sevastopol during the Crimean War. He decided on a complete encirclement of the city and its defenders. Osman requested permission from his superiors to abandon Plevna and retreat, but the Ottoman high command would not allow him to do so. By 24 October the Russians and Romanians had closed the ring. Supplies began to run low in the city, and Osman finally made an attempt to break the Russian siege in the direction of Openets. On 9 December the Ottoman forces silently emerged at dead of night, threw bridges over and crossed the V River, attacked on a two-mile front, and broke through the first line of Russian trenches. Here they fought hand-to-hand -hand and bayonet-to-bayonet, -bayonet, with, at first, little advantage to either side, however, outnumbering the Ottoman forces almost five to one, the Russians eventually drove them back across the V, wounding Osman in the process. Rumors of his death created panic. After making a brief stand, the Ottoman forces found themselves driven back into the city, losing 5,000 men to the Russians' 2,000. The next day Osman surrendered the city, the garrison and his sword to Romanian Col. Mihail Serchez. He was treated honorably, but his troops perished in the snows by the thousands as they straggled off into captivity. Results the siege of Plevna seriously delayed the main Russian advance into Bulgaria, but its send freed up Russian reinforcements, which were sent to Gen. Joseph Vladimirovich Gurko, who then decisively defeated the Ottoman forces in the Fourth Battle of Shipka Pass. The siege was widely reported on and followed by the public in Europe and beyond. Although the declining Ottoman Empire was by this time often regarded as the sick man of Europe, the Ottoman army's five-month-long resistance against a much larger army earned a degree of admiration, which may have contributed to the unsympathetic treatment of the Russian Empire at the Congress of Berlin. According to British diplomatic historian A. J. P. Taylor, most battles confirm the way that things are going already. Plevna is one of the few engagements which change the course of history. It is difficult to see how the Ottoman Empire could have survived in Europe if the Russians had reached Constantinople in July. Probably it would have collapsed in Asia as well. Plevna gave the Ottoman Empire another 40 years of life. The siege of Plevna also signaled the introduction of the repeating rifle into European warfare. Russian troops at Plevna were largely armed with the M1869 KRNKA, a single-shot lifting breech block conversion of the muzzle-loading M1857 rifled musket even though some units had been re-equipped with the more modern, but still single-shot, burden rifle. The old KRNKA was soundly outperformed by the more modern single-shot Turkish Peabody Martini rifles and it became clear that the new burden rifle had also been rendered obsolete even as it was being introduced into service. Outclassed by the Turkish Winchester repeaters, reports of the heavy losses suffered by the Russian army at the hands of the Turks at Plevna forced armies across Europe to begin the process of either re-equipping with repeating rifles or finding a way to convert their existing single-shot rifles into magazine-fed weapons. Legacy a large new factory building, completed in 1877, of the Finlayson & Co. cotton mill in Tampere. Finland was named Plevna commemorating the battle and the guard of Finland that took part. On 10 December 1977 on the occasion of the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the liberation of Pleven from Turkish rule a museum was opened in Pleven, the Pleven panorama built in Skobolev Park and the area of the Kavan Lake Redoubt where during the third attack on Pleven took place one of the heaviest battles. 
The city of Plevna, Montana in the United States was given its name by Bulgarian immigrants building the railroad there in honor of the Battle of Plevna. In other countries, there are five cities and towns named after Plevna, and there are 18 Plevna streets in Britain alone. In popular culture, the best-selling Russian detective novel The Turkish Gambit, the second book in the Arrest Van Doren series, is set at the Siege of Plevna. In 2005 a film of the same name was made. A famous Materan piece, Osman Parsimarsi, honors the courageous defense of the Plevna, and is one of the most well-known marches in Turkey. Under the Red Crescent by Charles Snodgrass Ryan, Australian surgeon at the Siege of Plevna, who later operated in the Gallipoli campaign and negotiated with his old friends for burial armistices. Bibliography This article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain. Chisholm, Hugh, ed. Plevna, Encyclopedia Britannica, Cambridge University Press, Compton's Home Library. Battles of the World CD-ROM, George Marcu, Encyclopedia Battaglia Law in Historia Romana Law, Editora Moronia, Book Koresh, 2011.